tonight. I forget how my camera works. I don't think let's record on the camera. The door opens and I become mildly forgetful. And welcome to part something. Why hello there, welcome back and welcome to part 21 of my build log of the Trumpeter 1 to 200 scale model of the Titanic. Today I'm going to be focusing mainly on the aft well deck. Um, I've got quite a lot of stuff finished on that. Not entirely done. Um, I still need to assemble the cranes, although all the constituent parts are now complete. And there's a few little other tiddly little details I need to do to finish that off, but we're quite a long way through the aft well deck now. I'm very happy with it. Um, I've also had a bit of a brainwave. Um, I've come up with a way of being able to charge the boat while it's in its case. Um, so what I've managed to do is I've turned one of the doors on the boat into a door um, and I'll explain a little bit more about what I actually mean by that when I get to it. But without any further ado, I will now crack on. The first bit I'm going to show you is actually on the forward well deck and it's just another little bit of added detail. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to add them originally but I decided I would. Um, the KA set comes with some really nice drainage channels. Um, so I painted them up. Um, and they look really nice, so I decided to add them. I then started work on some of the fixings for the aft well deck. Um, what, I'm what I'm doing here is I'm painting some of the ventilators and such. Um, <clears throat> and I've already done the white coat as you can see, but what I'm now doing is I'm just going over little bits and bobs with a very, very, very light black wash. Um, this is about 20 parts cellulose thinners to one part black humbral paint. And I'm just using a brush just to pick out some of the bits in detail. Um, and the black wash just sort of accumulates in areas that would have attracted dust and dirt. Um, I know Titanic was a new ship, and a few people have raised this in the comments before about, you know, oh, please don't do weathering, Titanic was a new ship. I'm well aware of that. But things like ventilators get dirty very quickly. Um, I work on trains all the time. Um, and whenever I go under a train to look at, you know, compressors or any bits of kit that have motors on them, the air intakes for the motors, even if they're brand new, get covered in dirt instantly because they just suck in everything. Dust, dirt, grease, hair, crisp packet, everything gets sucked into them. Um, so I know Titanic was a new ship, but I still think that especially these bits that have air flowing through them constantly will have got dirty. So here I am adding the plinths that the equipment sits on in the aft well deck. Uh, and as you can see, I'm using blue tack to position the stuff. Um, sometimes I like to use my fingers when I'm gluing stuff down onto models, but sometimes parts are just too fiddly um, and your fingers just, they're just too big. Um, the issue isn't so much the dexterity, but it's that your fingers get in the way and so you can't see where you're actually putting stuff down. And I tend to find that you can use blue tack to pick up parts, apply glue, and then lower the part down uh, onto the surface which you're sticking it to. And by using something like blue tack, you can still give yourself a good eye line for the part. Um, and then, of course, you can use your finger or another tool to apply pressure as the glue cures.
the things that I've been meaning to do for a while is to combine the boot deck and the aft well deck into a single um, piece, just like what I did with the Foxhall deck and the um, Ford well deck. Uh, it just seems to make more sense. You know, you've got things like uh, stairs from the poop deck down to the aft well deck and you know if I was taking the uh, poop deck off those stairs would almost certainly get damaged at some point. Um, there's rigging as people pointed out uh, in the comments you know there's rigging that um, will be easier to manage if these are all combined. So what I've done I've gone for a slightly different tack um, than I had with the Foxhall deck um, but what I've done is I have combined these underneath with uh, some packing pieces. These are actually just offcuts from the, uh, the keel block stuff that I did earlier. Uh, and I've done, I've been pretty liberal with the amount of stuff I've added there just because, you know, this is, this what I want this to be properly strong, don't want it to move anywhere. And then instead of having parts that locate on here to hold the deck down, what I've done instead is I've made a sort of latch right at the very stern of the ship. Um, so that is a piece of plastic uh, separated from the poop deck by a single piece of mahogany planking. And as you can see, on the very stern of the ship, I have a piece of mahogany planking. So when I put this in, this slides in place. And that bit of plastic I added just before locks underneath the mahogany and holds this deck firmly in place, nice and robustly. Uh, and it's a really nice, elegant solution, actually. I really like how it works. It removes the needs for any bolts here. As you can see, I've done away with the bolts here. I'll just glue the pieces that need to go on top without need of to worry about any bolts. Um, and then to secure the deck fully, I still have the four original mounting holes that I use there. So a nice, simple way of doing things, but actually quite robust. And it means that the removal of these decks is really swift and easy. In other news, I have um, filled underneath these parts and also at the back, just to make sure that no light escapes from underneath the decking. I was intending on showing you a little bit more of my actual building process on this deck, um, but as I showed you in the introduction, I managed to forget to press record on the camera a number of times actually. Um, so instead, I'll give you a brief summary on what I've done here. So here we have the current status of the aft well deck. As you can see, most bits are in. Uh, what I've decided to do is I've decided to make this the barrier um, between the superstructure that lifts off and the lower decks, which I don't intend to remove except for maintenance purposes. So this bit will stay here. Um, I'll have you know the ladders and such that come down into the deck and then the superstructure will sit flush with here and lift off accordingly. Um, <clears throat> and like I say, I think that is the, the best separation point um, for sort of tiny, fiddly little parts that might otherwise be susceptible to damage. Um, that's the rationale. 
So we've got all the winches, the uh, hatch covers are in place, we've got all the equipment under the poop deck. You can see the weathering comes across really nicely actually. Uh, you can see the weathering on the um, on the motors and such like that, you know, it does actually come across and it does, I think, set off the, uh, the looks really well. Um, there's other bits to add, for example I'm going to add the uh, you know, the drainage chutes along here. Um, these sides, the bulwarks, really add something to it as well. I think they just add a little bit more detail. Um, so it's not finished yet, but most stuff, like I said at the start of the video, most stuff is done, just not assembled. You know, for example, here's one of the cranes. So it's a case of gluing this down uh, onto the top of here. So most bits are done. Um, so I'm really happy with it. The next step is to move on to the poop deck. Now I haven't done a huge amount on the poop deck as yet. Um, the only bit that I've done is I've started work on the aft bridge. Um, so as you can see, here is the aft bridge. Uh, and the reason I've made a start on this is because the way that scale decks is sold, it comes in three different sheets. And the first sheet includes the poop deck, the forward and aft well deck, and the forecastle deck. And the other thing it includes is the after bridge. Um, and what it meant was that I'd used all of the other decks and I just had this single sheet, which was pretty much a Swiss cheese because there'd been so many holes cut out of it, um, with the after deck still on. And I just sort of thought to myself, if I don't do this soon, the likelihood is this is going to get accidentally chucked out or lost or damaged in some way. And I'd have been really irritated by myself. So I've started off the aft deck I uh, sprayed this side white, I sprayed the top black, uh, and then I've put the wooden decking on top. And, you know, you get a nice idea of how it will look one day, once I've done everything on that. So somebody raised in the comments that I hadn't shown what I had done to connect the Foxhall deck to the Ford Well deck. Uh, and it's exactly the same as what I've done on the aft deck. I've just used some mahogany uh, packing pieces to fill these up. You can see that um, there's no bolt anymore between the skylight and the underside. I've removed that because there's no need for it anymore. These decks aren't ever coming apart. Uh, and similarly, there's no de there's no bolt on the other side either. So that's how the, um, the four decks all slot together. The other thing that I've done is I have just countersunk the bow. Um, so what this will now do is I've got some countersunk M3 bolts on the way um, and I'll be able to use a countersunk bolt to locate into that threaded insert down below. Um, I'll be able to paint the head the same colour as this, this grey and then the bolt will be almost invisible underneath the anchor. So the next thing to show you is um, it occurred to me that it would be a bit irritating to have to take the boat out the case all the time to charge it. Because I sort of thought, you know, particularly in the winter, when I'm not going to be sailing the boat very much because of bad weather, I don't want to have to open up the, the case every week, take off the glass, plug in the charger, and then reattach the glass. That seems like a bit of a faff on. So I decided to try to make a system that would allow me to charge the boat while it was in the case. So what I did was I drilled and filed one of the D-deck gangway doors, and I filled that door with a fairly tight-fitting piece of wood. On the inside, I then added some hinges, as you saw there. Um, and on the outside of that piece of wood, I then glued a photo-etched door and painted it black. And there you have the final result. Uh, this door opens on its hinges, and it allows me to run charging cables through into the hull without having to lift up decks or things to do that. So it's quite an elegant way of doing this, I think, and it means that I can have these charging cables on the far side of the case, away from people being able to see them, so they're going to be pretty much impossible to see, and I'll still be able to charge the boat while it's in the case. The only downside to this is that when you charge a, a lead-acid battery, you, um, well, in fact, when you charge most batteries, you, pro you produce hydrogen. Um, and to be honest, I suspect this probably isn't going to be an issue for me, um, but what can happen is hydrogen's a lightweight gas, so the gas will rise. Um, and I was a little bit worried that over time, if, for example, in the winter I don't use the boat very often, 
um, but I still charge it reasonably routinely. It's a bit worried that hydrogen might build up in the case, um, and over time that can build up to an explosive quantity, and obviously that's that's not ideal really. Um, now, I mean, like I say, I, I suspect for me, this is probably isn't really going to be an actual issue. I'm probably over-engineering this a little bit because um, I don't think my batteries will kick out very much hydrogen. But just to make sure that this isn't an issue, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in the top of the case, um, which will allow any hydrogen that does build up to escape, um, and it'll just then dissipate in the atmosphere. So that is the plan. So here's the site. What I've done is I've made a little dam out of blue tack and I've filled it with some water and that just keeps the uh, the hole cool while the drilling's going on and it clears and flushes out any any um, glass that's ground up uh, during the process. So as you can see, I've got myself some new propellers here. These are actually cast from bronze um, and they I got them off the uh, Trumpeter Facebook group devoted to this model. Um, and they're actually derived, the original sculpture that's used to make these is the um, 3D printed props from the KA set. So these are really accurate. They are actually genuine models of the Titanic's wing propellers. You know, you've got the bolted details and the individual prop blades. You've got the sort of conical shape at the back and this bulbous middle section. And they're much more accurate than these ones that they're replacing. Now, these ones came off a model boat shop online and once I'd got them painted and weathered them a bit I was actually quite happy with them in terms of looks. They weren't perfect um, but they sort of did the job and because this is a radio control model function really does have to come before form. Um, now some of you remember, people who've watched this channel since the start will remember that originally I used Pontos propellers on here. Um, Pontos is one of the other sort of expansion sets you can get for this model, but they weren't quite good enough. The problem they had was that the blade pitch was really shallow, so it meant that even when the props were spinning at full speed, they just didn't push enough water to actually propel the boat forwards, um, which is why I had to change over to these. And these did quite a good job. As you can see, they've got quite a nice pitch. Uh, they've got a good swept area, and they did a good job. Um, now I've tried, I'm gonna try these out. I haven't tested them in the water yet, in fact, I've only actually just connected them in. Um, but I'm going to try these in the water because these have a larger swept area than these. The diameter of this is actually about 5 mil larger than the diameter of these. So that's a good start. And they also have a similar pitch to these. Um, now, the efficiency of these propellers is something that I can't really work out. Um, calculating the efficiency of a propeller isn't the easiest thing in the world. It's perfectly doable, but it, you really need to know the exact profile of the propeller and this sort of thing, and it's quite challenging. Um, the sort of equation you need to work it out is you you, you work out the amount of um, energy which this propeller develops, uh, so the useful energy, as in the energy that's going towards pushing the boat through the water, uh, and you divide that by the amount of energy that the engine is putting into the propeller in the first place, and you end up with a percentage, you know, um, and propellers tend to have about 85, 90, 95 percent efficiency, so pretty high in, in real terms. But um, that's something that really it requires quite good computers to do, and it's a bit out of the scope really for a model boat, <laughs> if I'm honest. I don't really think it's worthwhile doing. Um, so I'm going to test these by putting them in the water and seeing if the boat moves forward or not. Um, now you might say this is a bit of an expensive way of testing something out, and yeah, you are, you're right, um, they, they weren't the cheapest thing in the world. Um, but my rationale here is, if these do work, brilliant, I have a much more accurate propeller on the boat than I did before, um, and the boat still works as a radio control boat. If they don't work, I can replace them with these again. And at some point in the future, when I take this boat out of service and I stop using it as a radio control boat, I can put these back on and I'll have a really nice model with accurate propellers. So that's the rationale here. You might also say that it's a bit of a risk um, having such nicely worked props on a radio control model. And normally I would agree with you, actually, because it is a bit of a calculated risk. You know, there's always the possibility that this might spin off the shaft and sort of sink to the bottom of the boating lake and be lost there forever. And of course, that, that is a possibility. It might happen. Um, but the amount of grief that these gave me when I took them off was unbelievable. Um, because I use this stuff, uh, Loctite 
three, uh, two, four, three. Um, I had to use a set of mole grips and a set of pliers to actually get these propellers off the shafts. I was actually more concerned about damaging the, uh, the connection of the prop shaft to the hull than I was about getting the props off. Um, so these were properly stuck in place. Um, so any concerns I had about these sort of spinning off the shafts and being lost were kind of alleviated by that. Um, obviously, it's still a little bit of a risk. You, you know, you, you're bound to have something go wrong with the model boat at some point, but the amount of effort it took to get these off has sort of reassured me a bit. So, will the new propellers work? Uh, I'm going to leave that until the next video. So, on that cliffhanger, it is time to end. If you have enjoyed this video, please give me a like or think about subscribing. Um, if you've got any questions, comments, whatever, whack them down below and I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. Uh, sorry it's taken so long to get this video out. I've been really busy at work recently and I just haven't had a huge amount of time to devote to modelling. Uh, but hopefully we'll um, get back to a more regular schedule in the near future. Anyway, uh, until then, keep yourself safe and thanks for watching. Bye for now.